was an ordinary Tuesday, and I was just getting through my morning coffee when the first headache hit. This wasn't your average run-of-the-mill headache. No. This one felt like someone took a hammer and decided my skull was the new target. And then, just as quickly as it started, it was gone. But as the pain faded, something else filled my mind. It was like a short, blurry video clip playing right in front of my eyes. A man I'd never seen before, standing in his kitchen, making breakfast. He was humming a tune, completely relaxed. Then, without warning, the stovetop erupted in flames. I watched him panic, grab a dish towel to put out the fire, which of course only made it worse. And then, darkness. I blinked, snapping back to reality, my coffee still steaming in front of me. What just happened? For a minute, I thought it was a weird dream, or maybe some random daydream brought on by a lack of sleep, but it felt too real, too vivid. I couldn't shake the feeling, and something inside me, that instinct that says don't ignore this, told me I couldn't just brush it off. Now, imagine trying to explain this to someone. Hi, yes, I just had a vision that you're about to set your kitchen on fire. Yeah, not the kind of thing you go around telling people. So, I did the only thing I could think of. I googled local fire departments and made a very awkward call. Uh, hi. I think someone's about to have a fire in their kitchen. No, I don't know their address. No, I don't know their name either. Yes, this probably sounds strange. They hung up on me, of course. But I kept hoping, in some small way, that maybe, just maybe, that guy in the kitchen would get a funny feeling and turn off the stove, avoid a disaster. Because if I was wrong, which I had to be, right? No harm done. But that was only the beginning. A few days went by, and I started to think maybe it really was a one-time thing. Maybe I was just stressed. But then, it happened again. This time, I was at the grocery store, picking out a loaf of bread, when I got that same sudden splitting headache. The scene was different, but just as vivid. This time, it was a young woman, maybe 20, at a train station. She was glancing at her phone, too absorbed in texting to notice the train coming closer. The warning bell rang, but she stayed on the edge, and then, darkness. I nearly dropped the bread. I looked around, half expecting to see her there, but of course she wasn't. And here I was, in the middle of a grocery aisle, holding a loaf of bread like my life depended on it freaking out because I'd just seen a stranger's last five minutes as if I was watching a movie trailer. I knew then this wasn't just my imagination, it was real. And somehow, I was seeing it all happen, but too late to do anything about it. So, I did what anyone else would do. I went straight home and googled how to stop seeing people's last five minutes. Of course, nothing helpful popped up, just stories of ghosts, conspiracy theories, and a couple of forums debating the existence of psychics. None of that helped me, and the visions kept coming. It wasn't every day, but when they hit, they hit hard. I'd be walking down the street, in line at the coffee shop, even brushing my teeth, and suddenly, bam, there I'd be, watching someone's final desperate moments as they faced some unavoidable disaster. And every time, no matter what I tried to do, I couldn't stop it. But then one day, things got a whole lot more complicated. It was a Saturday morning, and I was finally starting to get used to the weirdness of it all. I'd even come up with a strategy. Whenever I had a vision, I'd write down what I saw, every detail I could remember. I kept a little notebook in my pocket, like I was a detective or something. I didn't know what I'd do with all the notes, but it felt better than doing nothing. So, there I was, drinking coffee at my favorite cafe, when the headache came back. I barely had time to prepare myself before I was pulled into another vision. But this time, it wasn't a stranger. It was my best friend, Lisa. She was on her way to meet me at the cafe. I could see her walking, hear her humming the song she always sang under her breath when she was nervous. And then, out of nowhere, a car swerved onto the sidewalk, straight toward her. There was no time for her to react, and then… darkness. I snapped out of it, heart racing my mind spinning. I knew I only had five minutes, maybe less, to stop it from happening. I didn't even think. I just ran out of the cafe, sprinting toward the direction Lisa would be coming from. When I saw her in the distance, I shouted, 
waving my arms like a lunatic. People around me stared, probably thinking I was some kind of maniac, but I didn't care. I just kept shouting, Lisa, stop, don't move. She froze, looking at me like I'd lost my mind. But as she paused, I saw it. A car screeched around the corner, swerving onto the sidewalk right where she would have been. I barely had time to register it before the car sped off, leaving Lisa standing there, wide-eyed and completely safe. When I reached her, she laughed nervously, saying, What was that all about? Did you see that car? I just nodded, trying to play it cool. Yeah, yeah, I just had a bad feeling. I knew then that these visions were more than just warnings. Somehow, if I acted quickly enough, I could actually change things. I didn't know how, I didn't know why, but if I was going to see people's last five minutes, I could at least try to make them count. From that point on, things changed. I couldn't go anywhere without feeling like I was on high alert, ready to jump in and save whoever's fate I saw flash before my eyes. It was exhausting, but I couldn't stop. I learned little tricks, ways to keep people safe without seeming like a complete weirdo. If I saw someone about to slip down the stairs, I'd accidentally bump into them so they'd stop and avoid the fall. If someone was about to step off the curb into oncoming traffic, I'd spill my coffee or make a loud noise, distracting them just enough. But the visions kept coming, faster and faster, and I started to lose track of reality. Every day became a countdown of, who will it be today, and will I get there in time? And then, one morning, I got the worst vision yet. This time, it was me. I was alone in my apartment, going about my day like normal, when I saw myself glance down at my phone. There was a message, something urgent, something I needed to see. But as I reached for my phone, something above me cracked. I looked up, just as part of the ceiling caved in, and everything went dark. My own last five minutes, and there was no way to outrun it. In a panic, I grabbed my things, bolted out of my apartment, and spent the rest of the day wandering around town, jumping at every sound, every crack in the pavement. Hours went by, and still nothing happened. Finally, exhausted, I made my way back home. As I stepped through the door, I felt a strange sense of calm. I dodged fate once again, or so I thought, because as soon as I sat down, that familiar headache hit, and the vision returned. Only this time it was different, I saw not just myself, but every person whose life I'd interfered with, every person I'd saved. Each face appeared in quick flashes, as if they were somehow connected. And in that moment, I realized the truth. I hadn't been saving them. I'd only been delaying what was meant to happen. Every last five minutes I'd seen was part of a larger puzzle, one I couldn't fully understand. And now, somehow, all those saved moments were catching up to me. The visions didn't stop. They only grew stronger. And now, as I sit here, I know it's only a matter of time before I'll face my own final vision. The last five minutes. Waiting for me.